The apartheid was a policy in South Africa that divided whites and non-whites through racial segregation and political and economic discrimination against black people in the second half of the 20th century. Many apartheid laws during this time period led to inequality against the majority black South African population, such as the Bantu Education Act in 1953, the Extension of University Education Act in 1959, and the prohibition of mixed marriages in 1949. Although the government tried to suppress resistance and criticism of apartheid policies, opposition still stood. One major group that contributed to the anti-apartheid movement was the African National Congress. Founded in 1912 under a different name, the goals of the ANC pertain to maintaining equality for mixed and black Africans. Starting in the 1940s, it began the fight to eliminate the apartheid in South Africa. Even when the ANC was banned by the government from 1960 to 1990, it operated underground and outside South African territory. Although the most well-known ANC leader is Nelson Mandela, there are several other figures whose stories are hidden in history, especially women. Women have played a very important role in the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, but are often overlooked. Women not only faced racial oppression during the apartheid, but social and sexual oppression as well. One of these hidden figures is Lillian Nagoy, who is the leader of both the African National Congress, the African National Congress Women's League, and the Federation of South African Women. Lillian Ngoi was born in Bloed Street, Praetoria, to parents Anna and Isaac Matabane on September 25, 1911. Growing up, she obtained primary schooling in Kilnerton and later, in 1928, enrolled in nurses' training course for three years. During her time at nursing school, she met her husband, John Jared Ngoi, who was a van driver and married him in 1934. They soon had a daughter together as well, Edith Ngoi. Unfortunately, this was short-lived, and John passed away in a motor accident in 1937. Shortly afterward, Lillian became a machinist in a clothing factory from the years 1945 to 1956 and would join the Garment Workers' Union. Lillian became very drawn to politics through the Garment Workers' Union and soon rose to become one of its leaders. Her drive to further improve society and people's conditions led her to the African National Congress and its 1950 defiance campaign. She showed her defiance and courage by using facilities reserved only for white people, despite knowing she would be arrested afterward. Lillian had a great gift of amazing public speaking skills and a strong drive that could not be stopped, all of which culminated in her becoming the president of the ANC Women's League despite only having joined the ANC for a year. Lillian also helped co-found and was the vice president of the Federation of South African Women in 1954, an organization of multiracial women that would become one of the most important anti-apartheid structures in South Africa. She took to the stage to say a powerful sentence, Let us be brave. We have heard of men shaking in their trousers, but whoever heard of a woman shaking in her skirt? She wanted to push for gender equality and racial equality, fighting to achieve her goals and take down terrible structures that created discrimination. Even overseas, Lillian began to gain recognition for her efforts and being a huge opponent against apartheid. She would address apartheid, apartheid protests from all over the world as well. This was highlighted in 1955, when Lillian, along with her fellow activist, Dora Talana, traveled to Lausanne, Switzerland, to participate in the World Congress of Mothers, held by the Women's International Democratic Federation. This journey was very illegal and dangerous. Both women went under fake names and stowed away on boats. Together, they visited England, Germany, Switzerland, Romania, China, Russia, and met with women also fighting for their rights. Through her travels, she spoke for the rights of everyone and equality for all, being a huge inspiration. She unified people globally. However, soon after she returned in October of 1962, Lillian was given her first banning order that lasted for a decade and a half. She was isolated and constantly monitored by officers, not able to leave or see anyone more than one at a time for a short duration. Despite this, Lillian still worked hard to get her voice out and continued to be very outspoken up until the day she passed, shaping those struggles against the anti-apartheid law, the apartheid laws in the 1950s. On August 9, 1956, Lillian, along with women Rahima Musa, Sophie Williams, and Helen Joseph, led one of the most successful and famous activities of FEDSA. It comprised of 20,000 women marching on the Union buildings in Pretoria, which were the administrative seats of the government. They presented petitions to protest the past laws, a system that segregated the people and their movement, specifically targeted towards Black African citizens. Unfortunately, in December of that year, Lillian was arrested for high treason, as well as 155 other activists. 
This would continue for a few years with attempts to silence the voices of hers and others to stop the apartheid movement. Lillian was firm in her identity as a woman, black person, mother, and worker to further motivate other South African women to protest, and was a manifestation of her ideology that the terrible apartheid laws that made horrific living conditions for black women stemmed from the core of white supremacy. She fought to make the future of South Africa better for her and everyone's children, in the process unifying the struggles of South Africa for women's rights and the racial discrimination from apartheid. Unfortunately, due to heart troubles, Lillian died March 13, 1980, at the age of 69. Lillian lives on through her contributions to the anti-apartheid movement and the black feminist movement. Lillian was on the committee of the African National Congress, which later became the government of South Africa, as well as being a founding member of the Federation of South African Women. She brought together her identity and became a key figure in the struggle for equality in South Africa, leading many generations to come. Her ideas of a militant black motherhood shaped the fight against unjust apartheid laws in the 1950s. Lillian herself never saw the freedom and equality that her accomplishments and challenges achieved before her death, but her legacy was preserved, with a few roads and clinics being named after her. However, what she accomplished for her country and the world was of a far greater scope, and her memory will live on in the lives of every single person she managed to help throughout the extent of her life.